Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. We follow mythology from many Western cultures like Greece or Rome, but we don't often hear about many Chinese gods. New Disney movie idea. You heard it here first. There are actually many Chinese gods in mythology that are extremely powerful. In Chinese mythology, there are separate gods for the creation of humanity, the oceans, love, even money. What's more powerful than money these days? Join us to hear about the 10 most powerful Chinese gods of mythology. But before we get started, why not become an archivist today by clicking that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. If you end up enjoying this video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and in the comments section, tell us what mythology you would like us to cover next. Number 10. Nuwa and Fuxi So let's start at the beginning. Literally, though. Nuwa and Fuxi are the mother and father of human beings. Nuwa was born in the beginning of time and was the fixer of mistakes made when the world first began. She created a palace for herself, her brother Fuxi, and her friend, who are shown in representations as human dragons. However, her palace, which became the model for construction in China, started to feel empty and she started creating humans using the mud from the Yellow River for company. To give them life, she breathed fire into them. No wonder I get heartburn. To take the work away from their creation, she created marriage and reproduction. Fuxi, on his end, gave them the gifts of skills and fire to live on their own. According to Chinese mythology, they're the beginning of everything that encompasses humanity. Number 9. Yang Wang of course, next to the god of human life, we have to put the Chinese god of death and king of the afterlife. While in Greek mythology, this would be our favorite Disney character, Hades. In Chinese mythology, Yang Wan Ye is in charge of the judgment of souls and is the judge of punishments and fates after death. He's vicious too. In one legend, a soldier comes to him denying the suffering he'd inflicted in his life Yang Wang brought out the scrolls of his life, and the soldier's sins, which he had denied, were read to him. Suddenly, a large hand came down to grab him and crush him. No one can escape the justice of Yang Wang, so don't even try. Number 8. The Eight Immortals Think of the Eight Immortals kind of like the Avengers. Each one has their own power, they live in a secluded area, and they're all coming out with their own movies. Just kidding about that last part. According to the legends, the eight immortals live on five islands in the Chinese Bohai Sea. They've also been called the Eight Genies, and their powers can either bestow life or destroy evil. Seeing as there's eight of them, this is the best rescue team you want around when evil does make an appearance. Boom! Life! Pow! Evil! You know, someone needs to make an Eight Immortals comic book series. Oh no, I didn't just say that out loud. Mm, keep giving away those great ideas. Number 7. Guan Yin Guan Yin, or Guan Yin Pusa, is the goddess of mercy. So while Yang Wang will bust you, Guan Yin is your mythical grandma, ready to come bail you out. She's known for helping the distressed, the hungry, and comforting those who need it. She's well-known by all ages and well-liked as a god. I mean, it's easy to like someone who comforts you when you need it, isn't it? She's also often represented in art and has names in many Asian languages, as she's a Buddhist symbol of forgiveness and maternal compassion. Number 6. Wang Mu Nyang Nyang Also known as the Queen Mother of the West, she's the wife of the Jade Emperor. She's in charge of all female gods. She's the goddess of happiness and longevity. She even has some handy elixirs and pills to make people live forever. She grows magic peaches in a garden, which, if eaten, can keep people young forever. It's no wonder she and the Jade Emperor are married, him with his calm demeanor and her with her happiness and longevity. That's the kind of marriage we all wish for. Number 5. Chang Wu Next up, we have the goddess of the moon, Chang'u. She was one of the most popular gods in ancient China and often represented in literature and art. She was rescued by the archer god, Hu Wei during a lunar eclipse, but betrayed him, stealing his elixir to become immortal, given to him by the gods. 
she transformed herself into a toad to hide from him and the other gods on the moon. And when the anger had passed, Chang Wu had already been a toad for too long and remained in this form. Now it's said that the silhouette of a toad could be seen on the moon for this very reason. This story is often celebrated during the moon festival in the fall, when people spend time outside observing the moon, eating moon cakes, and exchanging gifts. She may not have powers, but she is certainly revered and is an entity bringing people together. One thing we can say is that she'll never croak. I know, I know. That was, well, it was kind of funny. Come on. Number four, Niu Lang and Jia Nu. Ah, love. We had to come to the gods of love at one point, didn't we? Jenu was the goddess of weaving. She was never allowed to visit Earth, though she desperately wanted to. When she was finally allowed to, she of course fell in love with a cowherd named Nuo Lang, who stole her clothes while she was swimming so she couldn't get away. Soldiers were sent from the heavens to return Jenu to her home, and Nuo Lang was forbidden to follow, stopped in fact by a wall of stars we now call the Milky Way. Now, every year, magpies travel from Earth to the Milky Way, forming a bridge between the two lovers. On Earth, festivals are held to celebrate her and love itself. Number 3. Kaishin Kaishin is the Chinese god of wealth. Business people often offer sacrifices to them in their homes, at their shops, and hope that these will be enough to elicit his help in becoming richer. He's usually depicted in red with a golden rod and sometimes lots of gold accessories like crowns. He's very popular around Chinese New Year when luck is renewed, debts are paid, and cash brings in brand new luck for the coming year. So you better cashin on that. Oh, come on, that was a good one. Hmm. Number two, Long Wang, the Dragon King. Anytime you see a dragon in Chinese mythology, you know that there's going to be some power involved. The Dragon King, Long Wang, is the king of the sea. Long Wan rules his own court and all creatures in the ocean. He's also in charge of other waters like rain and also controls the wind. He is worshipped in China with sacrifices usually taking place around the fifth or sixth moon. Number 1. The Jade Emperor The Jade Emperor couldn't possibly be a regular god with that name. He's ruler of the universe and controller of all gods from several religions. He's worshipped by people all over China, and it's sometimes said that he was the one that created humans from clay. Though he's portrayed as one of the most powerful gods, he's also known as a kind and gentle old man who enjoys resolving things amicably. Basically, he's the ruler we all need. Thanks for watching. Don't know about you, but I really like mythology related videos like these. If you do too, let us know in the comments now. Plus, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, give this video a like, and use your social media power to share it with all your friends and family.